trains will no longer be able to pass through part of Oak Grove after a massive fire destroyed a train trestle. Our Thomas Schultz will have the latest coming up in this morning's top story. Plus. That kind of viewpoint based information is not the business of police and the police have no business collecting and maintaining it like they did to our clients. That's the legal director of ACLU Oregon who says the city of Medford illegally spied on specific people and groups. Who exactly and what the ACLU says the city was trying to track. And later. It's, it's our home away from home. A Southwest Portland Middle School shut down after an ice storm in January is ready to reopen seven months later, just in time for the start of the new school year. Six o'clock hour on a Wednesday morning. We have reached the middle point of the week. Can I paint a couple of broad strokes here, Rod Hill? A couple of broad strokes. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Uh, July, going to go down the books as, uh, as a very hot and dry July this year. Hottest uh, all time. We broke the mean temperature record. Okay. Yeah. Confirmed. Yeah. Verified. Yeah. Uh, August, going to go down as very cool and pretty wet for August. Yeah, we had, uh, I, I don't know what the final numbers are going to be, but certainly not hot. Mm -hmm. And certainly it looks like we're going to go in the books as wet. Yes, indeed. Here's a look at the upper level low that's going to be bringing us rain chances in the coming days. You can see it uh, up here. This is going to be dropping southward and then parking itself later today along the Oregon coast. Radar has been showing some specks of rain along the north coast. Newport's cloudy right now. Uh, Four o'clock this morning, this was showing rain showers. So an ongoing threat of some rain showers for you folks at the coast. Newport's are 58. We are cloudy but dry inland. Uh, Portland's 64 degrees. Not sure how much sun we get today. Certainly looks like it's mostly cloudy overall. And it does appear that we'll be dry during the daytime hours. Uh, 70 at noon, 77 to 5 o'clock. So your outdoor plans are go today. Rain uh, showers, scattered showers start to pick up at some point this evening or not until overnight tonight. That's your forecast for now. Rod, thank you. A freight rail bridge near Milwaukee is closed indefinitely after a fire early Tuesday morning. So at this point, trains are being detoured around that bridge that crosses over the Willamette River. Thomas Schultz is covering the story live for us. So Thomas, this is the freight train bridge that basically connects Milwaukee and Lake Oswego. Yeah, Drew in China it is, and parts of this bridge and sections are just charred. And of course, that stopped train traffic. Now, crews are left trying to determine how long these repairs are actually going to take. And video of this fire early Tuesday morning is just astounding. You can see sections of the bridge completely engulfed in flames. That was at 2.40 a.m. Tuesday. In just over an hour, Clackamas Fire had the fire under control and worked quickly to extinguish hot spots. Fortunately, there were no injuries reported, and it's not clear yet just how this fire started. The cause is under investigation. Though the railroad... I, didn't, I had no idea it was so bad. <laughs> I seen some pictures on yours, but it is as serious. The, the track is uh, deformed. The, the, all the trestles are, uh, you can see, in bad shape. So it's going to be a big, huge back uh, problem to repair. Yeah, a big, big problem, as that neighbor mentioned there. And of course, trains are left trying to find another way across the river. Once again, it's just not clear how long repairs on this bridge are going to take. Drew, China. Our Thomas Schultz reporting live for us. Thank you, Thomas. The woman who set a 119 year old church on fire in downtown Portland last year was found guilty except for insanity. Court documents indicate Nicolette Fate was diagnosed with a mental disorder. A judge ordered that she be sent to the Oregon State Hospital in Salem under custody and treatment for up to 20 years. New this morning, ACLU Oregon is suing the city of Medford for what it's calling illegal spying. So the group says public records show Medford police illegally spied on multiple people and groups involved in causes that address things like racial justice or LGBTQ plus issues. They also say this has been happening since as early as 2022. Tracking what sort of events they were hosting, uh, who was attending Black Lives Matter events, for example, who was attending um, kind of pro-abortion events. Uh, that kind of viewpoint-based information is not the business of police, and the police have no business collecting and maintaining it like they did to our clients. So both the city of Medford and Medford police have denied the group's claims. Police saying in a statement that they use public information to plan and staff events that impact public safety. 
one of Portland's most prolific taggers, will spend the next two and a half years in prison. 28 year old Jerry Mahongos, who goes by KASR, pleaded guilty to four counts of criminal mischief in exchange for the two and a half year sentence. It marks the first prison sentence under the city's crackdown on graffiti. This is not an activity that, that you get a blank check to go do. Um, there is a point where you may spend years of your life in prison for continually vandalizing property that is not yours. Per the plea deal, the tagger who has credited for time served will be eligible for time off for good behavior. The FAA is requiring the inspection of all Boeing 787 Dreamliners following an incident back in March when a passenger plane suddenly dove midair, injuring more than 50 people on board. The FAA blames the plunge on the captain's seat jilting forward and that, they say, caused the autopilot feature to disconnect. Similar issues have other, or similar issues on other 787s have also been reported. And Alaska Airlines has cleared a big hurdle in its proposed merger with Hawaiian Airlines. The U.S. Department of Justice ultimately chose not to challenge the $1.9 billion deal. Alaska announced in December that it would pay $18 in cash for each share of Hawaiian. Both airlines brands would stay intact after the merger with Alaska and Hawaiian flying few overlapping routes, but operating as one platform. The merger still needs final approval from the U.S. Department of Transportation. If you've been to the Oregon Zoo any time in the past, you might want to check your credit. The zoo says that more than 120,000 visitors could have their credit card information stolen. So according to the zoo officials, someone redirected transactions from a third party vendor, potentially giving them access to credit card details from December of last year through this past June. The zoo says the site is now secure. It's offering a year of free credit monitoring for those impacted. Today, the Southwest Washington Accountable Community of Health, also known as SWATCH, is hosting an event to bring awareness to fentanyl overdoses and also remember people who have died from overdoses. It's part of their eighth annual Overdose Awareness Day. The event will include Narcan training and connecting people to recovery services. There will also be a memorial with names and photos of people who have died from overdoses. It's all happening in Vancouver. More details on that event are right there on your screen. We also want to take a look at some of this uh, crazy video. It's also sad when you consider this is someone's home, right? This is out of Connecticut. A home collapsed there into a small creek after the state was hit by historic rain and floods last weekend. The homeowner says the ground around her home clearly eroded. That's when the home eventually caved in. Thankfully, though, no one was inside at the time. No one was hurt. Your time now is 6.07 on your Wednesday morning and take a look at weather with Rod Hill. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, well, this, the rain is still coming that we've been talking about, but it's going to take a little while for it to get going, it appears. In fact, today the forecast for Portland, Salem and Vancouver is all dry. The shower chance begins at some point this evening or maybe not even until overnight tonight. We see the clear spots right up in here is where a low is and you see the cloud bound at ahead of it. So we'll zoom in a little bit and it's this low that's going to be tracking southward and then eventually parking itself tomorrow, Friday into Saturday uh, morning along the coast and the weekend and come inland during the day Saturday. So Thursday, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, all days absolutely still likely that we get major precipitation. Now here is today at 1230. This does show a green speck here or there. We've had a few showers report along the coast this morning. I do think we'll stay dry during the daytime hours inland areas today, but a lot of clouds may see some thin. I like our chances actually of seeing some thin spots for partly sunny skies at times, but overall a lot of cloud cover expected. Now here's this evening at 1030. So later this evening, right? Here's the first organized wave of showers just approaching and then weakening as it rolls through overnight tonight. Here's tomorrow morning. Overall, not a lot going on to start your Thursday. Cloudy skies for the most part. And here's the first this catches your attention moment. This is tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock with showers and maybe some thunderstorms mixed in moving up through the area. Kind of a cool look at the clouds uh, hovering down over the summit of Mount Hood this morning. Clouds over the Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club in Aloha, so great start for a lot of us. Temperatures outside, 50s and 60s, 60 in Tiger, 59 Salem, 55 degrees out in Silverton. It will be a partly to mostly sunny day east of the Cascades. You see temperatures 80 in John Day, 80 in Manners, 80 in Pendleton. The shower threat at the coast and the dry weather with a lot of clouds and 70s up and down I-5. Here's your seven day. 
again, um, kind of pulling back the reins in terms of the confidence of when we're going to get rain and how much we're going to get. But there will be some tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. And that is your update for now.